Welcome to the second part of OpenShift Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery Demo. Uh, in the first part, we looked at how we can set up the entire environment of uh, uh, various components we need in our CD infrastructure, like Nexus Repository, Jenkins, Sonar Cube, and Gox as the Git, re Git repository. And we ran through the pipeline once uh, by uh, triggering the build. In this part, we're going to look at how we can make a change in the code, add a REST endpoint, add a test, and push that through the pipeline and watch how our pipeline gets triggered. So the pipeline is the same as uh, uh, the first part. We have the Git repo and Jenkins uh, building the code based on a Git repo. And then it does a parallel step of doing static analysis through Sonar Cube, and at the same time runs the unit test. If each of these, any of these steps fail, then the entire pipeline fails. If both of them succeed, then we move forward, push the artifact to Nexus, and start deploying the application. You start building Docker images based on that war artifact that we've built and push into Nexus. And OpenShift, in fact, is doing that for us. We just Give OpenShift the WAR file that we have, and OpenShift through Stui process, a source to image process, builds a Docker image based on that WAR file and layers it on top of JBoss EAP that this application requires, and it deploys it to the development environment. We run the integration test, and afterwards do the same thing. We, we tag that image that we built once as, as a good image. We tag it with the version that this application has, this, this particular uh, pipeline instance has, and deploy it into the stage environment for further testing. When we make a change in the Git repository, we want Jenkins to Jen, Jenkins job to get triggered. Let's take a look at a Jenkins job. There are two options, or at least two options. One is to have Jenkins to keep pulling the Git repo for changes uh, on, a, on a specified interval every five minutes or 10 minutes uh, uh, and so on or have the git repo to notify Jenkins whenever uh, uh, changes happen in the repository. We're gonna do the latter to reduce the load on the git server. It's generally not good to pull all the time every minute or so. So I'm gonna copy the webhook to this build. It's under this uh, play button. Then I go to our git repo in GOGS, uh, to the settings. Under the webhooks, I add a webhook. Webhook is a mechanism that uh, we use for triggering events on other platform whenever something happens on, on a Git repository. So here is my uh, Git, uh, here's my webhook to, to the job that I want to use. And since this gigs in, GOGS instance is running in a container, it can just use the service name to reach, reach Jenkins. We don't need a complete route URL. Uh, just send the push events whenever we have a push to the Git repo and this is active. There we go. Uh, the webhook was added. So now we can go and uh, run a Developer Studio. Uh, the Eclipse-based uh, IDE uh, with some JBoss plugins on it that we can use for coding. Let's look at the Git view. We don't have any repositories. We want to clone this Git repository into our workspace. So I go back to our GOGS instance and copy the URL to our Git repo. So it's already copied here, post, and uh, there it is. And it needs the credentials. And I'm going to use GOGS. GOGS, the username and password that we had created. Finds master. And it asks where to uh, clone this. And I'm fine with that uh, part. We may add projects here can clone it in our project environment. Okay, it is cloned now, and we want to create a project and import it in our uh, workspace now as a Maven project, so we can start coding with it. Okay, if I go back, we have the JBoss task project uh, imported in our workspace, and it's already, and we see that it's connected to the Git repo upstream. So we have a set of REST endpoints for manipulating tasks, like get the tasks, uh, create tasks, delete tasks, and so on and so on, uh, all based on uh, JAX. RS and we have a user's resource, a user's endpoint that gives the 
list of all the users. Uh, for each of this, we have a set of uh, uh, test classes also, unit tests that we run. We have the uh, tasks, uh, task resource test that runs a little set of unit tests. It's all mock tests uh, against the interface. You can run the test once. Okay, it's all going to run three tests. I have already added the user resource test with the, with a test, but with a number of tests also here as well. Um, and the test in this case is actually uh, ignored, commented out. So what we want to do is we want to include this test. This is not a good thing. We don't want to exclude tests from our, uh, our pipeline. So I'm going to remove the ignore so that we can run this test as well as a part of our pipeline. Uh, so we have made a change now. I'm going to commit the change in uh, to Gox. Uh, included user endpoint tests. Commit and then directly push it into upstream repository. OK. If you go take a look at Gox, we should have a new commit here. Included user endpoint test just committed to the platform. Okay, let's see what's going on in Jenkins. You see a job is triggered based on the git push that we did to the repository. If I click on that instance of a job running, a new instance of our pipeline is triggered. It's running through the build, test, and code analysis, Nexus push. Deployment to development environment and stage environment as we have in our pipeline defined. Takes a few seconds to run through the pipeline. Okay, this pipeline failed. We have red uh, in the test and analysis phase. Let's take a look at the logs. What's been going on? In the test phase, one of our tests has failed in get user sorted by tag. That's exactly the test that we just enabled. So there's a reason I guess people have ignored that, that, that test. Let's go take a look, see uh, why this test failed. Go back to the repository, to my IDE. And uh, if I run this test right here inside the IDE, see, yes, that uh, fails the same way. What's the message here? Uh, we have expected user two, but the actual value was user one. So in this method, we get the list of users from the user's endpoint, and we expect them to be ordered based on the number of tasks that they have created, and the order we get back is, is not correct. So let's go take a look at uh, our method. And ah, that's the problem. So we're getting a list of users, and we had some code that sort this out based on the uh, number of tasks. And this part is commented out, and that, that's, I'm guessing, causing the issues. I'm going to uh, uncomment the sort function. And let's run through this test once more. It's all green. Super. Let's commit the change to GitHub to uh, to Gogs. Commit and push to the repository. Okay. Go back to Jenkins. A new job is triggered and it's running through the change we made. Let's see how the pipeline executes uh, this time. We also get some uh, metadata around the, the job execution, how many commits there have been in this particular uh, run of the, uh, the pipeline, the exact hash code and shot code of the, the commit. So we can track that, which resources have been touched. 
Also, the pipeline plugin it calculates the average times for our um, build for the entire pipeline. So it gives us some nice um, stats, statistics about the pipeline. We can monitor the trends if a pipeline time suddenly gets spikes and increase in a couple of minutes. So we need to go look at a pipeline, what's been going down, why does it take so much more time? Well, this one, it went all successful. So that was the issue with our build. And since we fixed the test, uh, all the tests have been successful, all the fours and build success. And our sonar also see that it has gone successful, the analysis. Uh, we should have better code coverage now since we enabled the test. This was red before, now it's a little more orangish. And this one got a little better. And, uh, the user resource is very green and task resource is really slightly less green. Okay, push to, sec to next is successful. We're deploying to our uh, development uh, environment. If I switch project to dev, see a new build was created and uses that war file that we just created in Jenkins and pushed to Nexus to build a Docker image based on that and redeploy it in the development environment. Deploy successfully bringing the container up and it also did the same in the stage environment since the test had been successful. So we got a new instance of the, the container running in our stage environment. So that's about it from uh, today's uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery demo on OpenShift. Uh, through using Jenkins, Nexus, Gogs, uh, other components, Sonar, all running in containers, OpenShift, you can do end-to-end -end, uh, continuous delivery pipelines that trigger actions on OpenShift and entire infrastructure also uh, can run on OpenShift like you see in this demo. Uh, thank you for watching this.